and welcome to Jump Models and the first part of our Triceratops and Velociraptor diorama build. I quite like dinosaurs. Right, so what we're going to get in the box. I've opened the bag because it's rattly plastic bags. Basically, what we've got is head, front leg, back legs, and then on the other sprue we get body and more legs it's quite a simple kit it's a very old kit a very old kit but it's nicely molded so what we'll do is we'll take all the bits off the sprue and clean it all up and get it together it's a very very simple build so come up leave a knob and snap off come up quite close you want to clean up. Clean up our nubs. Get that all bit. Take them all off the sprue. Clean up. I forget when you're doing your nubs. Taking it off the screw lever, leave a knob, trim it a bit big, and then trim with a sanding stick. Right, so, we'll pause this. I'll pause this. I'll take all these off. It's a time machine. You don't want to see me. Clipping things or screws and dealing with because that would be boring. So, I'll see you in a minute. In a second. Time machine. Time machine. Right, that's all cleaned up. So, all we've got to do now is stick them all together. Oh, dinosaurs. Very strange. Very strange. Very controversial as well, I know. Now, I'm a believer in that dinosaurs weren't wiped out by a whopping big meteor. Landed in Mexico on the Mexican Peninsula. I personally think they were dead, extinct, a long, long time before that. For the reasons, for the reasons, but between in the ground, you've got a dirty, great big black layer, what they call the KT boundary. Which is where the debris from the meteor landed all around the earth and settled down, and then that's where you get the black line, the little tiny thin black line, and that's called the KT boundary. Now, if dinosaurs were around when the meteor crashed into into the earth, and there's no doubt that it did, scientifically proven, the evidence is there. But if dinosaurs were still around at that time, there will be skeletons, there will be fossils of dinosaurs in the KT boundary. And do you know how many dinosaurs have been found in the KT boundary? Not a single one. So, in my way of thinking, there should be hundreds of them. The KT boundary should be littered with fossilised dinosaurs. And there isn't a single one proving that dinosaurs went extinct hundreds of thousands of years before that event happened. It's common sense. It doesn't take a rocket science to work out that if the dinosaurs are wiped out by the meteor, then the fossilised remains would be at the KT boundary where they were killed. But there isn't to date there hasn't been a single dinosaur fossil found at the KT boundary. So it must have either been disease or climate change or just evolution that killed off the dinosaurs. Certainly wasn't in my book, in a common sense way of thinking. Couldn't possibly in the cat the meteor, otherwise the fossils would be there in the boundary, but there are none. 
controversial, I mean controversial. No, I'm just being sensible and realistic. So, is that that leg for that one? Yep, that's the one for that one. So, we'll glue that in. What are your thoughts? Anybody any ideas? As to why the dinosaurs weren't extinct. I think it was just climate change myself. Not being able to adapt quickly enough. Good job it happened, otherwise we wouldn't be here now. Still fascinating creatures aren't they dinosaurs? Oh yeah. The monkey. Get in there. And that's not quite sitting right onto that. Why is that? I said, I'm going to have to hold that for a second until it sets, until it grips. It's not a bad fit, I see, to be honest. For a very old kit, and this is a very, very old kit, the Raptors, oh, I dropped one. The Raptors are new, a new tool kit, and they're beautiful. Absolutely beautifully engineered. And a real pleasure to build. This is alright, there's nothing wrong with this. The only thing I don't like about this kit is the feet. They're a bit too chunky and undefined. But we can get around that. You're not gonna see much of its feet when we get the when you get it on the diorama with the groundwork. And there's going to be too much going on for you to look at its feet. I'm going to try and do something that's like, oh, that's cool. Nothing gory though. I was going to do it where it was like on its side and eating it. And, and I thought, no, nah, it's a bit too gory. I don't want to do gory gory. But we'll still do something quite cool with it. We'll do it like it's an action shot. Bit of a nub there, so we'll get rid of that. Sand that off. I don't want that. And I missed. Get that leg done. And then. I thought I was missing a leg then. Half a leg, I thought, ooh, panic. Almost half a leg. <clears throat> nope. That's the bit. That's the bit. Yep, that's the bit. A bit of extra thin on it. Oh, get in position. Right. Now what we're going to do is. Down there, a bit down there. Squeeze him together for a minute. Turn him right, same on that side. Yeah, just gonna squeeze that side. A tiny bit of sand down on that bit there. We'll do that in a second. I'm just getting together for now. Extra thin on it. Get him somewhere near and then just touch it to it and let the capillary reaction drag the glue in. Give it a squeeze. Squeeze it. Oh, 
right hand will go to the side. Right in there. You with a squeeze. And then set up. And put that to one side. Ugh, oh, right then. The little body bit. Big when you compare it to the size of the Raptors, and these are the scale, same scale. These were big beasties. Oops, it falls apart. Let's get it somewhere near. Let it hold. This extra scent is fantastic glue, it really is. Put it away, but it might be pinned together a little bit, holding together, elastic band or something. We'll see how it goes. It's sticking. Up, it's, right. it's sticking. This skin detail on this is quite nice. It's really nicely moulded. Oh, we're coming apart here again. Let's hold it together. Put the extra thing down it, let it beat down it. Again, yeah, it's definitely going to need elastic band, I think, on that bit in a second. Just to get it to hold together while it glues. It's a bit of extra thing, though, it doesn't take very long for it to, to do its magic. And it is, without a doubt, the strongest bond you can do with plastic because it's actually plastic welding. I know it sounds silly, but it actually welds plastic to plastic. And what it actually does is it's a very, what they call a hot glue. It melts the two sides. And then the plastic merges as it's melted. And then once it evaporates, all the chemicals that makes it melt, it then goes hard again. And you get a very, very strong bond between the two. In fact, there isn't a bond between the two. We've actually melted the two together. Clever stuff. That's clever stuff. So, hold it. Don't matter how long it takes you to glue something together. Just don't use heaps of it. And just work your way around it. Do it in stages. A little bit there. Snip it together, hold it for a second or two. And just work your way around it. Nothing to be worried about. Nothing to be scared of. You just could hold it for a minute or two, that's all. I know it's boring once you hold things for a minute or two, but Get the back legs on. It does evaporate very quickly, this stuff. So, let's just clip in. And do the old capillary action job. All the way around. Give them a squeeze. Hold in for a second. Let the glue do it, work its magic. And that doesn't even actually need any filler. Doesn't need filling and sanding, it's a lovely joint. Which is nice. It's a 
really, really simple kit to build this. It's great for kids, this build, this kit. It's fantastic. Very simple build. The Stegosaurus was the same. Now, a few months ago, me and my 11 year old son built these. He built this one, and I built the Stegosaurus. So this time, I'm building this one, and he's building the Stegosaurus. The Stegosaurus went together as nicely as this one has. So for the price of the kit, it's only seven pound. Pretty much everywhere you'll pick them up. You pick them up some place. You'll pick them up cheaper than that because they are very old kits. But don't let that put you off. They're a very good kit. You wear one to me as the best fitting kits in my book. Back in the day, the only one that wasn't. But they have remoulded it and reboxed it. Was the T Rex? And the T Rex, for some bizarre reason, was a horrible kit in comparison to the rest of the range that they put out. And they've actually bought some new, some more as well, some newer ones now. And we'll be looking at them later on, I think. Because I, I like dinosaurs. I like doing dinosaurs. And you can't go wrong with dinosaurs. And the beauty of dinosaurs is. You can paint them however you like. Because nobody can river count you on it because nobody knows what dinosaurs actually look like. They know what they look like from the fossil record. You know, it was this shape and it looked like this. But they can only do an interpretation of what colour they were, what the skin texture was like, whether they had feathers, whether they didn't. Because we weren't around to look at them. Thankfully, they were long gone before we arrived on the scene. Well, like I say, we wouldn't be here as a species. We'd still be fairly little mammals screwing about, hoping not to get crushed or eaten. Right, so the back legs done and the body. And we'll get the front legs on. And a bit of glue around it. The old capillary action do its job again. I quite like the way this one's got its paw as if it's like pouring at the ground like a, like a rhino does before it charges which is what we want for our diorama because it would be just about to charge we want little annoying dark plodders or raptor that's about to pounce it with half a dozen of its mates Hang on, is that going to sit? Yep, that's what we want. We want it like that. So, hopefully. Yeah. You see how nice that, that fits together. There was no major gaps, no major filling required. It's a nice kit. For a very, very old kit like this is, it fits together exceptionally well. Alright then. Let's build a head. I 
going to be action going. It's got a lot of detail on the front as well. Skin texture detail, but bumps and bumps and. I'm tempted. I'm tempted to paint them bone. The spikes on the edge of the frill. Paint that like a like dinosaur skin sort of tower, and then just on the tips of these, each into it like it like a, a bone plate. Because we don't know. I was watching a program on Discovery Channel the other week, and uh, I'm saying now that the Triceratops there. Uh, the head armour, although they had a very nice ball joint on the neck, wouldn't have been very strong. Wouldn't have been able to stop a T-Rex from ripping bits out of it, and it was used for display. So they'd pump blood, they'd pull a blood vessel, and they'd pump blood through it, and then a bit like a, a lizard does now, a comedian does now, or a cuttlefish where it uses colour as a a defence of a, a scare mechanism. I suppose you've got something this big with dirty red big horns and all of a sudden it flashes bright red at you. Zoom. Just that oh that split second could mean the difference between life and death, I suppose, in this in their world. Well, that's the head done. A bit of sanding on the beak there. We'll do it now because when we get the beak together, and these now together, that will be quite awkward. Get that lined up. That's one of them. Think and plan your build things that we were on about last time. Sand it now, see if we're messing about later, trying to struggle. Right then, so there's two lugs there, two lugs there. Let's that locate that onto there and there. And it fits. Be alright if I was concentrating properly, wouldn't it? Right, so that's the position it goes in. Get in there with the extra thin. It's work. It's a fair old size. We'll see in a minute when we compare it to the size of the raptors. But in our world, size don't matter because raptors are well hard. Pack of raptors wouldn't be scared of a lot. Scared of nothing really, I wouldn't have thought. Cautious, but certainly not scared. Oh. The bottom jaw's not right again. So a little bit of extra thin in there. Do that as well. And then all we've got to do then is throw on the horns, even with dry for a bit, throw on the undercoat. Definitely get in there, isn't it? So the 
Holmes. Right one. Menacing and a bit ooh, scary, scary one. You know, I'll set the one in the snod. I'm going to go that way because it's shaped. There it is built. Didn't take long, did it? Right, so I'm going to leave that to dry for a bit for the glue to sort itself out. And I'll go and give it another coat. So, we'll call that a day for today. We've been going what, half an hour or so. So, we'll call this video done. The next time you see it, it'll all be undercoated. So, I will see you in episode two when we get to doing some of the paintings. And then we'll discuss the diorama for him. So, uh, Oh boy, Mr. Wrinkley's. We'll call him Mr. Wrinkley because he's an old guy. Right then, so, play your PlayStation, your Xbox, your PC. Get outside. Go and meet people. Have an adventure. Have some fun. Get some sunlight. Always, always tell somebody where you're going. And most importantly, what time are you going to be home? And I'll see you in episode number two. It's a time machine.